worked sorted, I think. Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a week, I think, on the dot since I've uploaded, so, uh, three subscribers! Yay! Weekly update! I'm really happy. Three subscribers in one week. Um, great to have you. Uh, great to have you. Great to have you join me. I hope, I hope you're here again. Uh, you might not be, but that's alright. Uh, so today is very simple. You guys barely know me. I barely know you. So I want to do a couple of videos which will help you get to know what kind of style I write like, what kind of read like. I don't know. I'm not sticking to authorship or booktube. We're just going to go put both into one, alright? That work? That works. So, here's easy. I'm gonna name my top five favorite book series of all time. Now the problem is, I've read a ton of books. Like many people on this side of YouTube, I've read many books. The difference is how many series have I finished? I have started Knots and Crosses, never finished it. I have finished, I mean I started Shadowhunters, never finished it. Uh, I started <coughs> Time Riders, never finished it. I started Divergent, kill me. No offense to the Virgin fans, but I hate it so much. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Um, I thought, yeah, I and I Emmett took a couple of years where Emmett stopped reading altogether, and my English in school and all went down the drain. So, I but I've recently over the past few months been getting much back into reading. I'm rereading some of my old favorite books. I'm rereading some of the books we have here. So I'm gonna give you my top five favorite book series of all time. Mainly because I don't have a top 10 because I don't think I've finished 10 prop books yet. I don't count Beast Quest. And I'm not putting Divergent on my top anything. Unless it's Lee's favourite. Okay, capiche? We understand? We understand. Okay, we'll start basic. I might be able to put images into this video. I don't know. So, there may be images here. There might not be images here. But that's fine. We we move. It's It's... That's okay. So we're gonna start number five, then work our way to four, to three, two, then to my favorite book series of all time. No. Okay, once more, there was a slight complication, just like the last video, but that's okay. I learned how to trim videos, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. So we're start with number five. We'll get this over as quickly as possible because it is late, and I need to finish recording the video for tomorrow, which I'm recording today, and it. <laughs> It's been happening all day and my head hurts, but fine. Number five. Who can go wrong, <clears throat> even if the author is really beginning to piss me off? Harry Potter. Yeah, can you see it? I Is it right there? It might be right there. It might not be right there. It could be right there. I don't know. It might be. Harry Potter is an... Mm, amazing. I do think it's overrated, but that doesn't stop it from being amazing. It's not the second coming of Christ. Okay? Listen, right? Harry Potter. Biggest thing for Harry Potter with me is the world building. They, JK, as much as she's really starting to piss me off, like I said, JK put, obviously put a lot of care, time and effort into making the world of Harry Potter from Diagon Alley to Hogwarts to Hogsmeade to the Ministry of Magic to all the monsters and creatures that, no, I'm not a Potterhead. All I know is I'm a Hufflepuff, okay? Is that, that, that's all I know. I'm a Hufflepuff, okay? I'm not a Potterhead. I don't know. I'm more of a nerd with other things. Harry Potter, I've always loved it, but it's, a, it's not my strong suit. But I, I, I know a good chunk of it. And I know that, very clear that JK put a lot of care and effort into the world that she has created. And it goes the same with the characters. There are many... F I don't think there's a single bad character <clears throat> besides Cho Chang, Cho Chang uh, in the Harry Potter series. Everyone from basics, like I think Hermione is the best out of the main trio and then Ron and then Harry. Harry kind of begins to annoy me as the books progress. Um, but other characters just Draco, Voldemort, Bellatrix, Sirius, Ramus, Snape, Snape, Snape. God, Alan Rickman couldn't have done anything better. And Dumbledore, D Dumbledore, Dumbledore. Um, I don't think there's a single bad character besides Cho Chang in the end. All seven books. Seven books. Not eight. We don't talk about the cursed child. But that's not it. I have a lot of nostalgia for the series because it was the first book series I ever read on my own. When I was four or five, my dad read me uh, Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. Uh, but then once I was seven, I was like, I'm going to read a book. And uh, I picked up Philosopher's Stone, read it by myself. And my love for writing has just increased. And I mean, reading, not writing. Writing came after reading. Uh, but like I said, bit overrated, but fantastic world building, fantastic characters. But a lot of it is nostalgia, okay? Okay. 
Uh, number four, the Hunger Games trilogy. The Hunger Games shouldn't work in my opinion. To me, it is, it should be so boring and bland, but Suzanne Collins does something so, I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's the characters. Now, like quick note about me. When it comes to writing, characters are the most important thing to me and if I'm writing or reading or playing or watching anything. Characters make the world. If your characters do not feel like real people, I'm gonna have a hard time connecting with said thing. I always put more care into my characters than anything else when I'm in my own writing. And Hunger Games has some great characters. Now obviously I'm not a big romance fan. I like I like a good little bit of romance, I don't mind it. Um, but when you've got the same love triangle between the two hot lads and Peter, Gale and Katniss and I know and, and there are some brilliant, I mean fantastic characters in it. I love Finnick so much. Um I think he's one of the best characters. And speaking of characters, I honestly think I have not seen a ballad of songbirds and snakes. I've not not seen. I have not read a ballad of songbirds and snakes. I will find time to do that. This is just focusing on the main trilogy, okay? Well, prequel book will come to maybe in a later date once I've read it. Uh, I'll probably need to reread the whole series to do it though. Doesn't matter. But like I said, President Snow is one of the greatest fictional villains of all time, in my opinion, in not just in literature because the fellow that played him in the movie, because sadly I can't remember his name, but whoever played him in the movie, Jesus Christ, I wanted to slap him. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. I'm a big acting fan as well, like big acting and uh, and writing. But no, like I said, works when it shouldn't. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's so unique. It took the Battle Royale and altered it. And like I said, nothing is original. What you need to do is you need to focus on something that's already been done, but you need to put your own spin on it and focus on things and how they work. Uh, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some slightly boring characters. I'm not a big fan of Peter. I'm not a big fan of Gail. I'm not a big fan of the female president, the leader of District 13. Um, again, I was just told that the virus may or may not be affecting young people. I'm trying to keep my best in the whole pandemic thing and I'm trying to wear my mask and I'm Make sure to not be stupid and go out to house parties because people are just clapped when they do that. It's it's really stupid and people need to realise what's really going on. But let's get enough of that. Enough of the sad stuff. Um, like I said, the Maze Runner trilogy. Oh, the best dystopia. In my opinion, out of the big tree and the big tree to me are Divergent, The Hunger Games and The Maze Runner. They're the big tree and not in terms of quality, in terms of popularity. Like I meant, like you could probably tell. I hate Divergent with a passion. First book's alright. Second book's boring. Allegiant can die. Please. I, I want it to be erased so badly. Oh god. I, she is the worst protagonist I've ever seen. Okay. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But the Maze Runner is the complete opposite. The Maze Runner takes, like I said, a simple concept and mm, teenagers trapped in an arena have to fight for survival. But like I said, own spin on it. The Maze is brilliant. I think the first book is definitely the strongest, followed by Death, followed by Death Cure, no, and then the Scorch Trials. But Maze Runner is fantastic in the tension. I don't know if I've ever felt as much tension reading us. I don't know if I've ever been as scared, besides one one exception. In reading any books, they read more like horror than anything else. The whole people can rip the part like that. The deaths are gruesome. They're annoying. It's dark. It's gritty. A couple of annoying characters. I don't like Teresa, but Newt, Minho, Thomas, Chuck, Gaddy, Gailey, Gally, Gally. They're Albert, um, Ratman. Oh, Ratman's a fantastic villain. I, it's brilliant because it's a moral decision. Do they give their lives for humanity or do they fight for their own well-being? It's brilliant and like i said very unique dystopia very unique take on dystopia which like i said when you take something and you put your own thing it makes it 10 times as better final two number two just being outclassed by a certain other series is the skullduggery pleasant series by derek landy I might be a bit biased. This is one of the only book series I've ever read that is set in Dublin, Ireland, which is, you know, 
where I'm from. But good luck your pleasant needs. I don't know how popular it is internationally. I know many, I mean many people have read it across uh, across Ireland. But if it has not been read internationally, it needs to be. Derek Lanny creates this whole underground society of sorcerers with their own and like I said the world building rivals JK there's secret towns the different types of abilities are all so unique and fascinating and honestly the plotting is amazing my man wrote and this is focused on the first series yeah there's one there's two Skull Degree Pleasant series he wrote nine books took a four year break and then came back to it again and is now four books into the second series of Skull Degree Pleasant which is brilliant because I wasn't. I thought. I thought he was looking for a way to make money. I don't know. I kind of felt that. But no, I'm rereading the series at the moment, and I'm on the tenth book out of because I haven't read the thirteenth, but I've decided I got the thirteenth, and I hadn't read it in so long, so I decided that I'd go and reread all of them, and I'm on the tenth at the moment. And my man is setting stuff up in two thousand and ten that does not get revealed until twenty eighteen. Sorry, twenty nineteen. What? This, this, we're, re we're reaching plotting levels that shouldn't be possible. My man's definitely a plotter. And he's also a bit insane. He's brilliant. He's so funny. And speaking of funny, the comedy in the Skullduggery Pleasant series is tight. Oh, I've never laughed so hard in my life. I don't think I ever laughed at any books so hard in my life. All those books I read when I was a kid, which are funny, like Diver Wimpy Kid and Howard Henry, they don't give, they don't come close. They don't come close. Because I would recommend Skull Degree Pleasant to anyone. If you can pick up the first Skull Degree Pleasant book, it says 9+. plus. And, that's the, and I think it does that as a children's book for fantasy. My man then just goes, after book one, he realises, no, 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 we can do so much better. Just, book two, people are exploding. Book three, people's faces are being sucked into them. Book four, people being blown apart and having their mouths stitched and it's, oh, it's mad it's mad um, and I love it with every bone of body and I cannot wait to finish reading book 13 because then we got book 14 uh, next year next 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 spring they usually come out on the, uh, in spring so uh, brilliant I can't wait but even though I've just raved about that there is one series for me that takes the cake and like school degree pleasant it's two series there's the first series of six books and then there's a four year break and then a trilogy of a second series we're excluding the trilogy here just like we excluded the second series of school degree pleasant in the last one because i've not yet finished it the gone series by michael grant i was in easton's one day just chilling and when my mom was shopping i was about 13 and i picked up this book because i read the blurb and i was like oh this looks really cool and then then i bought it Words, I don't know if words can describe how good this series is. Um, I've cried, laughed, sh trembled. Like, I, a book has never made me that scared. Then not, Stephen King's books have not made me as scared. And we'll get to that main reason in a second. But one of the reasons this book is so good, it basically, you've got everyone over the age of 14 disappears and this town is encircled, in a is caught in the middle of a 20 mile diameter invisible dome and then the kids are developing powers and it's it sounds run the mill fantasy adventure but it's not he gets teenagers perfectly this is as a teenager this is how we would react in these situations it's extremely realistic in how worlds work they don't run out of food they start starving in the second book because no one knows how to grow food because they're all like six the characters the characters are written masterfully i've Oh, and I don't, it's, it's, it's so good. I don't want to reread it. I want to keep that whole, reading this first six books in my head. The second series is set four years later. The trilogy, it's, it's good. It's not great. Ending's a bit controversial. I want to talk about that a bit in the future. But then I believe this has the greatest villain. This series has the greatest villain in all of literature. King Joffrey... Nah. Uh, Annie Bates. Uh, Annie Bates? No, Catty Bates. Annie Wilkes. Bates is... Bates is the Catty Bates. That's the... Annie Wilkes. They got nothing on Drake Merwin. Drake Merwin is a monster trapped inside a 15-year-old boy's body. I've never ever felt I you don't know he's uh, he's in the scene and you don't know what's gonna happen you I, I, you can usually tell someone's gonna die when he turns up 
and then oh I had to put one there was one time when I had to put the book down it was so and this is gruesome these books are gruesome like six year olds get whipped alive in and then they're bad now obviously it's still fantasy adventure and things really go but uh Drake Merwin is yet to me the greatest villain in all of the literature I've ever read and he's not even the main villain which is fantastic uh get a chance to pick it up if you can Michael Grant is definitely him Derek Lenny and Stephen King are 100% my three favorite authors of all time and I, I can't wait to find more I can't wait to re I need to do a lot of rereading because I stopped reading for a long time and wow I, I really enjoy talking about favorite books but there you go that's today's video we're gonna I've got the rest the next three days all done I'm just finished just about to finish up recording tomorrow's video and, uh, and then we'll get Wednesday's video recorded tomorrow and I'll have that up for Wednesday and then I've got if I have my look at my schedule here on my iPad I have got only four more days to pl plot out uh, for the month of October which is obviously Preptober um, because I've got so many ideas and so many new things we can do and I cannot wait to share those videos ideas, share those videos ideas with you I hope you did enjoy. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you hated it, give it a dislike. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, but that's it from me for today. I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and I'll talk to you in the next one. In a bit.